Welcome back to the Global Investors Report here on Arise News. The Nigerian Stock Exchange has announced the postponement of the planned listing of Airtel Africa, which was scheduled to hold today, Friday, July 5th. A statement released by the NSC said the postponement was necessitated by the need to ensure that the company meets all the post NSC approval uh, prerequisites for listing on the NSC. However, the facts before the listing event will hold as planned at uh, 11 a.m. on Friday, July 5th, 2019, end of quote. Now, the NSC said it will provide further communication on the issue when all the conditions for the listing in its market had been met. Well, in our studio in Abuja, we have the President Association of Telecom Companies in Nigeria, Ulushola Teniola, to discuss this. It's good to have you, and good morning, uh, Teniola. Now, um, well, you've heard Airtel's uh, uh, listing at the NSC has been temporarily postponed uh, due to some uh, issues. Uh, it will communicate uh, with us uh, lately, uh, uh, much later to that. But be that as it may, uh, Airtel's listing, a dual listing, in London and the Nigerian Stock Exchange, what do you make of it? Uh, thank you for that, and good morning to you and your viewers. Uh, the step that uh, Airtel has made is uh, a positive one in the sense that uh, in terms of our preparedness, and that's the industry's preparedness to uh, widen the scope of broadband rollout, uh, 4G networks is, is the key to achieving that. Uh, we anticipate a 70% broadband penetration uh, by 2024. Uh, and obviously, on the, on the back end of that, uh, we have 5G networks that uh, will be a focus and a focal point uh, where we have seen most recently in London, Vodafone launching its 5G network this week. Uh, so, yes, uh, aspects to do with funding is a key uh, issue for our, our operators, not only in Africa, in Nigeria, but elsewhere, where we know that the amounts needed to increase the broadband penetration in an emerging market like Nigeria uh, is into the billions of dollars. Very good. And still talking about uh, funding, what is the likelihood that more network providers will key into the capital market, do you think? Um, yeah, obviously, uh, the recent uh, announcement that uh, Airtel has postponed us shows you the complexities and uh, the uncertainties that uh, surrounds uh, the capital market. Uh, as you know, uh, conditions in London with respect to Airtel's uh, expectations were not met. And that's purely because uh, if you look at the background to uh, any African entity seeking uh, capital exposure, um, i.e. additional shareholders to uh, take on the risk, uh, a beta risk higher than one, which is typical in emerging markets like Nigeria, suggests uh, a, there's uh, policies that uh, investors are not certain of and a recognition that the market has matured but also is a very difficult one. So uh, the, re the reality out there right now is that uh, anyone who wants to seek additional and different types of funding will have to ensure that uh, they're well positioned, corporate governance is, is, is put in place and that uh, they actually do sell hard, and I say hard, now Africa is a hard sell outside of the shores of Africa, uh, for additional investors to come in who uh, see the risks that are involved in uh, uh, operating in this environment. Uh, very good. Now, let's talk about the industry proper. Nigeria still retains a large subscriber base in the telecom sector. Now, how profitable is this scenario? and What are the challenges? Um, yes, you're right. Nigeria has the largest subscription base uh, in Africa. And remember that uh, over the years, the top end of the market has already been uh, captured by the front four leading uh, mobile operators, especially with the leader, uh, MTN, uh, that has the sort of the high end earners. Uh, and obviously, SSL is focusing on, oh, sorry, Nine Mobile now, not SSL anymore, focusing on the youth segment. So it, re it leaves in between the youth segment and the high end spending um, uh, subscribers uh, a base where Globalcom and Airtel will continue to battle it out. Uh, that the reality is that upper rates are dropping. Uh, we are on an average of about $4.78 uh, per subscriber per month. And that is in an environment where costs 
are continually increasing, especially unplanned costs. And I refer to unplanned costs uh, that surrounds multiple taxation and multiple regulation. I, I think that uh, the government really needs to look in inwards and see how we can harmonize the 39 taxes that our industry is faced with. It doesn't really encourage FDI and it obviously puts a burden on upward investments and doesn't wait for the outcomes, which is greater employment um, and obviously increased revenues at, at the back end. So, you know, the industry as it, as it is, is at a crossroad because we have OTT players that are also coming in that are not uh, are facing the same sort of uh, challenges that uh, the telcos that uh, are on ground are facing. Oh, very good. Now, in terms of regulations of the telecom sector by the NCC, how would you measure compliance by network providers and what are the issues hindering this? Look, uh, the environment in Nigeria is, is a unique one. Uh, if you look at other jurisdictions, we don't have a struggle with power. Uh, our operations are 100% self-generated, so we as operators are power agents as well. So we have to ensure that diesel gets to the base stations. And uh, if we look at the latest statistics, we have about 44,000 base stations. Um, so you, you, you can see the magnitude of the problem. Uh, the problem is that there is a diversion of our focus away from being telco-centric to really being power-centric. And then we have the issues around uh, the norms that any uh, operator or any company has to operate in a very difficult uh, environment where really we need government to review policies. If we're talking about enabling a business environment, we really need to see the true enabling business environment in its true sense, which gives tax incentives, it gives encouragement to uh, businesses that can actually provide jobs for the youth of the future. And currently, the way we are currently structured uh, in the industry, it doesn't enable that. So it's going to be a very difficult four to five years where we need to keep up with the changes in technology and as well as try and make a profit. So yes, costs are a major issue and the areas that I've suggested like multiple taxations has to go to ensure that we have an environment that is deemed favorable by uh, future investors. Very good. You're right. Uh, power is an issue and transcends the telecoms uh, sectors as well. Now, are subscribers' complaints given due attention over time by telecoms providers, especially when it comes to controversial charges? Uh, what do you mean by controversial charges? Well, we have uh, some hidden charges. You know, people tend to complain uh, that uh, they're getting text messages and uh, they're being charged for them that they don't really need. So what do you make of that uh, development? Uh, well, there's DND, uh, do not disturb. Uh, I suggest that consumers that uh, believe that they're not being uh, fairly treated should uh, uh, adopt the DND. Um, and then if that is not working, there's also the NCC 622 inquiry desk that they can lay their complaints. Very good. Now, in terms of innovation and development business-wise, how would you describe the fortunes of the Nigerian telecom sector so far? I think that we have to take ourselves back 20 years ago or 15 years ago where we had an incumbent operator called Nitel that wasn't able to deliver more than 500,000 subscribers on the fixed line network. What we have now have, we have 168, 173 subscriptions on the mobile telephony arena. That's a huge achievement by any, by any stance and by any measure. And we've done that over a period of 10, 15 years. So the next area we need to really focus on is how do we able to provide uh, innovative products and innovative solutions uh, over and beyond just data, pure data, that's what I meant, and voice. So it, there's some challenging aspects. Uh, I think that if we remove some of the givens, we will be able to ensure that uh, going forward, if we have the right capital base, that we'll be able to introduce some of the innovative products that other youths across the world are taking for granted. Very good. In view of the uh, challenges you've just analysed, uh, what are the prospects of more foreign investment in Nigeria's telecom sector, you think? Uh, there will always be some uh, encouraging investments 
what we want to see is an upward swing in investments, not a downward trend or flattening of investments. I think if we target the correct policies that need to be put in place that encourages uh, foreign direct investment, then you see a lot more activity in this space. But at the moment, uh, you see the, tend to find that people are rather cautious uh, because of the antecedents that's happened with the MTN fine, uh, the issues around uh, what they will see is over-regulation uh, from different parts of government. So it sends a mixed signal to any would-be investor right now. All right, very good. Now, where do you see the telecoms industry in Nigeria in the next 10 years, despite all this myriad of uh, problems? Uh, the telecoms industry will always be the backbone of any society. I think that we take for granted, even this program that we're using, we're using telecommunication equipment, we're using techno telecoms technology. So, you know, I see that, uh, uh, you know, in 10 years time, we'll still be uh, adopting technology that uh, will take us beyond what we are used to. There'll be more automation, for instance, in society. There'll be a lot more improved efficiencies. I mean, there's an ample opportunity in, in Nigeria and Africa to improve productivity. So <laughs> that's a good area that I see us uh, exploit. And I see that maybe the youth, if we get the right policies, will be employed in areas uh, that are similar to what has been done in India, like BPOs, that's business process outsourcing, and a few other areas. Uh, manufacturing might take a bit longer to really manufacture telecoms equipment in the country, but uh, in terms of services, there's ample opportunity. I, I wouldn't want to disclose some of those on this uh, on this program, but uh, I can be. You can be rest assured that technology advances will be adopted in this space uh, as we progress. Very good. And finally, how would you describe uh, your, the telecoms industry with uh, the financial sector? We've seen a lot of synergy in terms of uh, services being rendered there. Uh, the financial sector is uh, due for serious disruption. Uh, I think that when you look at uh, what's happening in uh, the blockchain space, uh, that just shows you that uh, uh, transactions to do with payments is really elementary now. I mean, uh, there are some very much more sophisticated applications that are going to be deployed around the Internet of Things, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, I repeat, machine learning, robotics. So, you know, the, the way we transact and we perform uh, businesses in the financial world is going to be totally different. I mean, right now we are seeing early use cases where you, people right. can get loans by using their mobile device. And okay. President Atkin, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. It's good to have you. Thank you.